we have Thomas Walner and Daniel Darboski Bryant, who's going to be doing a fireside chat with you. Um, so I'll leave it up to you two. Take it away. Thanks, nice, Julie. All right. Hi. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Nice to meet you, Thomas. My lucky day. I get to chat with you for the next 15 minutes. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Doing good. I'm just looking behind you there. Is that more prizes and trophies you've won for your work? Um, yeah, over the years, I've amassed a few. There's like two Emmys here from five nominations and uh, a lot of TV nice. awards as well. Um, yeah, because I've always been really playing, uh, you know, in the interactive storytelling space, basically. Yeah. We're going to get to storytelling in just a moment and interactive storytelling in particular. Yeah. For those people who don't know you, um, Thomas Walner, you have a background in film production. You studied that at York yeah. University, is that correct? Yes, yes, that's right. And um, I, I worked as a documentary filmmaker for many years. Right. So I want to jump into that a little bit. I, we only have 15 minutes. We could stretch sure. this out, but there we go. No, that's um, fine. But also, uh, this team, the uh, the WebXR team, runs the Polys uh, in 2020 and 2021. Um and uh, you and your team won, is it, you can see it in the thread at the bottom, three-time Polly winning director. Uh, <laughs> in one go. <laughs> in one go. I was watching the videos back, and it kept coming, oh, we won again? <laughs> it was a great moment. Um, I enjoyed watching those back. So what's that been like, uh, the results of the, the, the Polly's for you? Was that a big big deal for you? It was a big deal, actually. Um, and... It, it provided a really important validation of our work and our vision uh, at a time where it was really crucial. Mm. And, you know, I'd like to say that it was instrumental actually in convincing, you know, some investors to now come in to basically help Fantastic. us along our roadmap of where we're That's going. Um, and so it's been, um, it's been extremely beneficial. So thank you to the <laughs> Polly Awards. Well, you did the work. You well, that the means work. I was one it. of the judges at the time, and it was a no-brainer. Yeah. Well, you know, if we do our work well and fulfill our vision, and that vision, right. you know, has a place in in the space of WebXR in terms of democratizing mm -hmm. the creation process, then the Polly mm -hmm. Awards will have actually contributed directly to you know the expansion of the medium, which I think is the whole purpose of it, right? It absolutely is. I, I loved how you said in one of the um, reception speeches you gave, you just said one day um, the Polys will be the Emmys. Um, yes, yeah. I, I really hope that comes around and we meet on the red <laughs> carpet somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to all work together to make that make sure that happens. Right, that's why we're here. Great. So um, tell us a little bit about your background in film production. Uh, and that will lead into immersive and interactive storytelling. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I began, you know, a long time ago wanting to tell stories in film. Um, and, and the, 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 you know, the medium I chose for that was uh, documentary. You know, done a lot of sort of high-end theatrical documentaries, uh, mm -hmm. mostly on, you know, deeply human subjects. Yeah. And so over the years, you become good at telling story. And then as as the you know internet started to branch out and become something that you could actually first deliver stories in and then basically utilize to tell stories in a different way um i i was just um doing a lot of experiments uh, and usually these experiments really hovered around using multiple media at the same time mm -hmm. uh, you know using different platforms together to tell a wider story you know stories right. that so and then you begin to realize how difficult it is to tell interactive stories, how sometimes the idea of the power of linear storytelling actually clashes with the ability to interact with the story. And that's sort of a Gordian knot that a lot of people are still trying to unwind. Yeah. I then became aware of immersive video. And mm -hmm. like many people who came into the first contact with it, they were, you know, they were just floored by mm -hmm. suddenly seeing something that didn't have a frame. Now that is, probably already quite normal uh, for people. And then you already see, and then, then when you see it immersively, uh, let's say in a headset, mm -hmm. now you're into a completely different medium. And one of the first things we did as, the, as a company, Liquid Cinema, is to build tools that sort of helped in the direction of the attention of the audience yeah. uh, to sort of um, utilize this medium more effectively. 
Uh, right, because yeah. as a as a two D director, you have that control. Of, I'm going to show you this, and that's where your attention is. And in a headset, they can look anywhere. That's that's correct. And there's a couple of things that happen. There's a couple of losses that you undergo as a filmmaker, which makes. Um, and, and by the way, we do much more than immersive video. That's just a small part of what we're sure. doing now. I mean, we're going all out with six off and synchronized video and objects, and you name it. But. Um, Okay. You know, it, I it, might be asking you about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah well, let's see what I can okay. actually say. Um, so, you know, it 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 just um, it poses a lot of difficulties uh, for a filmmaker. So, one of the things that you get out of making a film on a two D screen is the principle of juxtaposition, where two shots come together mm -hmm. and create a meaning that didn't exist in the shot. So, you have mm -hmm. a neutral face and someone I don't know. A, a, a sad child and then you'll say okay this man is really sad he's looking at the child of course mm -hmm. that connection is done in your brain as you watch it now in vr the problem is when you shift somewhere else you're actually going somewhere else there's no mm -hmm. collision of metaphorical ideas so whew, juxtaposition right out the window you don't get to utilize it to tell your story so that sucks right. <laughs> and um and then of course you know uh, you know the the angle now we've evolved patented uh, technology that actually gives uh, filmmakers who are working with immersive video, the ability to actually enforce an angle in a way that the audience doesn't even notice. We call it directed perspective. And we've racked okay. up a couple of patents for that. And it's a little, I think, time's too short to get deeply into that. Sure. But I think it really changes the relationship you have to the medium. Our, our platform is the only one that, that has it. Um, Very cool. Just, you, yeah. I wanted to pick up on something. You said, obviously, sure. as a film producer, you lose something going into immersive stories. Yeah. Do you gain anything as well? Of course you do. You know, it's <laughs> like you, you gain a medium that can give you a sense of actually taking you somewhere in a way right. that regular 2D film can't. So it's really about, you know, I think I think the trick is to is to sort of not try to replicate something in a new medium that is being done and let's call it a traditional, not an old medium, but you know, mm. in a traditional medium, traditional. Um, but to then also leverage the strengths of the new medium uh, yeah. to do things that you just can't do, uh, that you couldn't do before. Right. So uh, so it's, it's like pros and cons. Um, yeah, yeah, I was, um, you saw my notes, I know you did. I was making notes and thinking about uh, this <laughs> conversation. Bit, yeah. yeah, sure. Um, Storytelling is as old as, as language uh, yeah. uh, and humanity in some ways. And um, in my notes, I was trying to work out when you tell a story verbally, you're delivering an input to somebody's mind and they take that and they create their own images and pictures and whatever yes. experience emerges yes. from that. Yes. When you're doing that in a book, it's the same. It's just words written. When you're doing it with photos or with television, it's more animated and there's color and sound to it. But, but same principle. Still, right. It's the same principle. But now you're putting somebody, it's a whole experience. You can't, yeah. you almost can't avoid. So does that mean we need less imagination because we're being fed more experience? How do you see that? Yeah, this is a difficult subject. But the one thing that you can say, so all, the, the way you summed it up was really good. So you talk basically about two dimensional media and in that list you had, you know, verbal storytelling. Sure. Um, what, what is fundamentally different is that in this modality of storytelling, traditionally, mm. you're actually removed from the world of the story. Right. And that has some really huge advantages. Excellent. What that allows you to do is that story is something external to you that you can project your emotions onto because right. it's actually separate from you. Okay. Right. So, and that's a very important principle. The other thing is that most of the, the, the traditional way of stories are, and I don't mean this in a negative way, are passive in the sense that you right. sort of give yourself over to the storyteller, you let go and you go kind of in a, a linear trance that lets it all work upon and you. your imagination and your imagination is filling right. in the blanks and most importantly what that does it pulls emotions out of you so when you see something you're really relating emotionally to what's being shown to you right. um and now now it doesn't have the same sense of immersion it has a very deep emotional emergent uh, immersion immersion mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry yeah. and uh, now with this new medium what we have of course 
is the ability to be viscerally really close to the story, but mm -hmm. we have to figure out what our relationship is. And so mm -hmm. I think we have to think about this principle of how we project our emotions on things. So it's a bit maybe like the theater where you've broken the fourth wall and you're right mm -hmm. in there. And I think maybe I've always believed that there's something uh, of what I would call a, a lean in, lean out experience. So mm -hmm. um, there's no reason why you couldn't see an unfolding story spectacle immersively where you don't okay. necessarily have to interact where it works upon your emotions mm -hmm. and your ability to stand back and i think we could adapt to that mm -hmm. um, just like we do in the theater you know we might not just plop ourselves right on the stage and interact right. um, but then maybe there is that that sort of stops and then there's things we can do to interact a little bit and maybe influence or feel connected to the story in some yeah. small way and yeah. it being small might just be enough to give us that feeling yeah. of agency the, the biggest problem is i think you want that interchange of these two forms because really mm -hmm. um the moment you interact you break down that sense of transcendence, then you're more mm -hmm. like into an idea of a simulation mm -hmm. uh, where you're participating, where you're, you know, your emotional responses might be different. They're more sort of cerebral right. or tactile rather than, yeah, yeah. this thing where you're most uh, projecting emotion. So I think, I don't know, that's the exciting that's part. That's, that's the I exciting the part one. of working yeah. in a medium where we all get to explore this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll, where we will find new answers and maybe new forms of storytelling that don't conform to what we had before, but that actually leverages new strengths. Uh, and, and maybe they're sort of social in a way. Yeah. I feel like we've only just gotten started, uh, Thomas. Uh, I'd love to have this conversation extend along. I just, to almost to finish us off, because we're at time, I apologize. <laughs> okay, no, no, I, wanna, I do want to ask you one thing very briefly. Sure, sure. Can you tell us about a production related dream you have, either for yourself or for the industry? By that I mean, what do you really want to be able to do with this medium or for yeah. the industry or the technology to, to allow? Yeah, I do have a dream. I mean, our company, Liquid Cinema, is driven by a dream that's called Jackknife VR. And what we want to do is basically you know, take our thinking as storytellers, with, of which I think you got a glimpse here, uh, and create the tools so that creative storytellers don't have to jump through a thousand hoops to create content, um, you know, so that it becomes a lot easier to create content for the web so that a regular person, uh, you know, with some knowledge, of course, uh, mm -hmm. but can create, you know, worlds and interactive experiences. And it's especially around the coding aspect where I'd like to focus on non-coders being able to very quickly create interactivity uh, for immersive experiences, and I think that would be that would be uh, that would be a great thing to do. And, and I'm excited about this idea of making I don't know making it as easy as using Premiere Pro or you know, you know but the equivalent yeah. of yeah. of um, you know of, of that, so that there's a more direct relationship between your ideas and what yeah. you put out there for people to experience. Well, Thomas, if you're excited about this, I'm excited about this. Um, we're going to watch you closely. Um, we didn't get to talk about maybe things upcoming, but we'll have to save that Next for time. time. <laughs> there you go. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And um, here's another amazing, amazing creative person, James Origo. I hope you two get to talk someday. I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. Thomas, love for now, thank you so much. And with Liquid Cinema, best of luck. And All right. um, thank you. Watching, very much. watching you closely, my friend. Okay. All take right. care. Bye bye. Thanks, Hi, Thomas. James. <laughs>